So, these past few weeks I played 60 hours or so of Starfield. I was planning on making a video on that, but my Asus motherboard decided to buy the farm directly, halfway into my video making process, taking my SSD with all of my footage and my script with it. Uh, we did. It's running great. It is a next-gen PC game. We and because Starfield was beginning to bore me to literal sleep multiple times, I decided that wasting 20 more hours of my free time on a game that is no longer in vogue and has been properly criticized in every manner possible would be the equivalent of grinding my elbows against 20 grit sandpaper to see when the bleeding would stop. So I moved on to more neon pastures. I expected the 2.0 update of Cyberpunk to be a moderate success, adding some more distinct abilities, but as with any promised features, I tend to temper my expectations. So with all that out of the way, I'm glad to report that Cyberpunk 2.0 is really fun. The gameplay systems on offer here are much more in-depth than before, allowing the player to finally build a character who feels specialized, much more so than before. I'm not sure of the actual timeline of how long Update 2.0 has been in the pipeline, but for damn sure, at least the gameplay is now a bright spot as opposed to another dull stain on what was an overall murky experience. The new director they brought in, Gabe Amatangelo, and I hope I'm saying that right because he sounds Italian and I am Italian. Previously worked the likes of Bioware and Mythic Entertainment. I watched an interview with him recently on the Friends Per Second podcast from Skilla, and I could tell he had a clear vision of what the game could be with what was ultimately a massive rework. The team could have just rested on the laurels of the base game's adequate combat and just made more story content for it, but no, he and his team quietly gathered a lot of the complaints the community, and oddly enough, specifically myself, had about the gameplay, and addressed them to great effect. It's like someone at CDPR read my mind. I always thought that the gameplay of Cyberpunk at release and up until now was kind of dull at best, requiring the player to like really stretch the limits of the combat to make it fun. I lamented the fact that not enough of the playstyles felt very unique, because for the most part you could do everything with everyone, and the skill tree was absolutely rife with monotonous stat buffs and perks that were really just incremental attack power and cooldown reductions. Huh. Wait, that seems familiar. Now though, every major spot in the perk tree, and a lot of the minor ones, have immediately noticeable and tangible effects on how you engage with combat. Hacking, which was busted in 1.0, is even more so in 2.0. You can take over cars to run over enemies, you can make those cars accelerate at full force and ram down lines of gangbangers. You can now cue quick hacks on people, so they fire off one after another. The reflexes tree gives you access to dashes and then air dashes Doom Eternal style, which makes your mobility skyrocket. This all feels great, as it gives you power spikes not in damage alone, but in combat decision making. This is how all upgrade systems should be done letting these skills influence the player's tactics in a way that makes the game organically grow the power fantasy as opposed to never evolving the dominant strategy. In a video I recently watched from White Light, a significantly bigger channel than mine who makes significantly longer videos than mine, he talked about games where the player must be intrinsically motivated to make their own fun in a sandbox that has one of these clear and dominant strategies for success. Cyberpunk before 2.0 definitely fell into this category for me, and I think for a lot of people. 
With most people who talked highly of this game's combat espousing the virtues of spamming certain dodges and slides and mantling over everything and anything to get fun looking gameplay, when 99% of the time that was just wasting time in the name of being flashy. And after a while, committing to that playstyle still became dull because the combat was actively fighting and punishing those options. 2.0 brings meaningful choice and agency to your character in the perks they acquire. These perks aid in not only gameplay though, but world building. Expressing meaningful choice through gameplay is what video games do best. And there is no doubt that having gameplay that fits the fantasy is the greatest immersion builder a studio can achieve. Further helping to build this immersion though is the new and vastly improved cyberware system, where before the game was littered with obnoxious, ghastly looking clothing, complete with destiny style gear scores that also bestowed ludicrous amounts of armor for what amounts to t-shirts and yoga pants, now your armor and the newly introduced stamina system is tied directly to cyberware and this is truly the most ingenious change in this entire update. Cyberware on 1.0 was something you could completely ignore. In the base game, if you forgot about it, you could still march right through the end game based on your perks alone. The reason this choice works so well is because cyberware is now integral to your character's survival. This so much better sells the illusion of the cyberpunk setting than any story or highly paid voice actor could. By forcing the players to engage with Ripper Docs, the augmented future is reinforced directly through gameplay. You want to go up against legions of goons and make it out alive? Not without some chrome. The cherry on top of all of this is how the player needs to actually make meaningful choices in cyberware as well. One of the best changes the team made is making it so a Netrunner, for example, has to choose a cyber deck over some other incredibly powerful piece of cyberware. If you want to be an elite hacker man, you must choose a cyber deck over something like a Sandevistan, the one that slows time and makes you faster relative to it. I know people will inevitably complain about this, as in 1.0 everybody had a cyber deck, but this decision completely sells the immersion of building a distinct character and making meaningful choices that deeply affect the way the game is played. I'm envious of people who waited until now to jump in. If you did, the gameplay now more than ever sets the stage exceptionally well for a game that went from, but the story is great, to the experience that the trailers promised us. Well done. This is definitely Cyberpunk's redemption arc, and I'm glad to say that the 2.0 update is extremely fun, and I think I can now definitely recommend Cyberpunk to just about anybody.